What's up world? My name is Sarah and welcome back to another episode of Whatever It Is That We're Doing Here. Tourists. Thrift stores are full of, oh, please survive this project. I say old, but stitching detail that I like onto our fabric. Loop holes. <laughs> Poor sewing machine. I don't know. Recipe cards. Puppy dog leather. Oh my god, no. That's, that's horrible. <laughs> Pin this to the fabric, what kind of inspiration you'll get. I hope this minus the bottom. <laughs> oh no. Strap? Freestyle? Oh no. A no pattern sewing project? Thing that goes through the loopies around your neck and then you can... On top, relatively simple. Make it a bit thinner. Doing that thing with the stitches again with my hair on it. So like the title suggests, we are going to make a apron, simple apron out of a piece of fabric, actually a curtain that I thrifted not that long ago. I hope this video inspires you to go out and maybe DIY your Christmas presents this year because thrift stores are full of unused, lightly used, items that can be brought back to life in a very unique way, very simple way. If you don't want to make an apron, that's totally fine. I have another project that's coming up relatively soon that might also be a great gift idea if you're interested. So subscribe to the channel and you'll see more of that. But today we are transforming this old cotton curtain. I say old, but I don't know if it's been used. It has a denim feel to it. It's cotton, but it's still like a rough kind of cotton. It has a bit of a stitching detail that I like. And I've never done this project before, so you are going to learn along with me. Let's get started with this project right now. Now, first off, I'm going to use an apron that I already have. If you've seen some of my cooking videos, you've seen me wear this. It is a denim, I have not made this myself, but we're gonna trace this onto our fabric, cut it out, and then I'm going to weave the little belt thing a little differently than it is on this, but I'll show you when we get there. Now, before we trace and cut the actual pattern, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut the already folded edges off, and then I'm going to use it as the neck and belt strap. So yeah, I think I'm gonna cut both of the sides and we can see if we need to attach them together if this one side isn't long enough. It might, I don't know. So we're gonna cut the folded edges on both of the sides of the old curtain and set them aside and then cut our pattern. Now, depending on the design of the curtain or the fabric that you have, you're gonna want to place the traceable pattern on top the way you want the pattern. So for, for instance, these lines, I want them to go up and down on the pattern of the apron. So I'm gonna have the traceable pattern on top and the lines vertically. Now, also what you wanna keep in mind, if it is a curtain or another piece of fabric that has some sewings or edges that you like and prefer. For instance, this is the bottom part of the curtain. It's already been folded and I like that neat edge. I'm going to utilize it in my own pattern, line up the bottom of my apron with the pattern apron and pin this to the fabric and then we are going to cut the edges that need to be cut and continue from there. Now, if you don't have an apron already that you can use as a pattern, this is relatively easy in the sense of a no pattern sewing project. I think what you wanna do is kind of take measurements maybe from where your neck is and how long you want the apron to be. Maybe it's to your knees, maybe it's all the way down and determine the, the width I would say it's probably about where your elbow is to your other elbow, obviously, would be the width and then cutting the opening for your hands. Relatively simple. 
In my case, I like the aprons to be relatively big to wrap around me because when I get in the kitchen, it can get hot and messy. Now, when you cut a pattern on top of the other, what you wanna do is leave a little bit of room so you can fold and sew. Now, the only question left is, do I really need to pin it? Cause it's laying down quite nicely. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting around the pattern all the way to the other side. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna pin it at all. Freestyle. Now, there's a whole bunch of curtain left that I will use for future projects. Don't throw it away, because you never know what kind of inspiration you'll get. Like, I can make pillowcases out of these. Actually, speaking of the extra fabric, I'm going to use a small portion to make a pocket in the front. But before I make the pocket, I do want to explain how I'm going to do the strap that's going to be our belt. So for the strap, what I want to do is I'm going to fold the one that we cut, obviously, <laughs> not the sample piece that we just have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold around the seam and then eventually feed it through that hole. So it goes from one point of the belt all the way around your neck and then out the other way as one continuous strap. The reason why I want to do that is because like in this case, I have to tie a knot behind my neck because this is a little big for me. But if we have one continuous strap, it's easier to adjust for different people, different sizes. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. So the first action point, what we're going to do with the sewing machine is we're going to sew a clean zigzag all the way around the edges that have been cut. So everywhere else, minus the bottom that has already that clean edge. Perfect. Next up, I'm going to double fold and pin all of the edges that we just zigzagged. stitches again. Oh, please survive this project. Oh no. Poor sewing machine. Really is on its last little bit. Hooray, we made it to the end. All right, now that the general apron is done, I'm going to fold these parts so the round underneath your armpit. I'm going to fold wide enough for our belt that we previously cut in the beginning, wide enough for it to go through. So it'll be like a thing that goes through the loopies around your neck and then you can tie it in the back or sometimes I tie it from the back into the front because the strap is so long. So what I'm gonna do is fold neatly wide enough for this to comfortably go through that part. All right, let's pin it. So now that I folded the loopholes for the strap, I've decided I want to fold this strap into half, make it a bit thinner, to fit the loop holes, loop holes. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by folding the strap that we have in half, sewing it together, and then we're gonna sew the loop holes and make our pocket. All right, we have our strap ready with my hair on it. <laughs> And we have our apron. Now, this side is where we turned so we can wiggle him through, like so, like that. Now, technically, the apron is ready. We can try it on. 
and then fix our pocket in the right place. Now that we have our finished apron, you could leave it like this, but like I said, I wanna add a pocket because I actually use the pockets that I have in my other aprons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of the curtain fabric that we already have to make a front pocket, just a single front pocket, nothing too special. Now, I wanted to utilize some of the apron's own sewings in the pocket. So I think what I wanna do is use the top part of the curtain where the rods go through. I'm gonna remove one of the straps that are on and use this part as the pocket. So we're gonna try and line the vertical lines from what is already on the apron. Now, if the lines or the pattern that you have in your project don't align perfectly, don't worry about it. It's still gonna look perfect. So let's remove the back strap. All right, I cut a piece of fabric. This is our pocket. So the top part of the curtain is going to be the top part of our pocket. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew a zigzag around all of the edges except the one that's already nice and neat. And then we're going to fold and pin the pocket to our apron and try it on because we want to see that the pocket aligns where we want it to be. And if it aligns where we want it to be, we're going to sew it on and then our apron is ready. All right, now that the apron is on, the pocket has been pinned, we are gonna sew the pocket so we have a ready apron. I think this turned out super cute. The fabric is super durable, so that kind of makes it like that apron-y feel from the get-go. The pocket is big enough for keys and phone and all the things that you would put in a pocket on an apron, a towel, recipe cards. If you were to make this for someone that loves to handle the grill, maybe you could do it with denim or a leather or some other kind of grease and sweat and sun durable material and then if you want you could do it with puppy dogs and flowers and whatever suits your style now you could also use lace maybe faux fur i don't know if that's good in the kitchen you could add a christmas theme or whatever you find in your closet or when you go thrifting now, even though I did the strap underneath and looped around, you could do a separate strap for the neck and separate straps for tying it around your waist. That way you'd kind of skip the folding and tucking it through. That could be an easier way to, if you don't want to do the tuck part. This is a beginner friendly project. I hope you make these maybe for Christmas gifts or for yourself. I'd love to hear what kind of fabric you might use. And again, I want to encourage you to go to the thrift stores, rummage around the fabrics that they have, because even going through the fabrics might trigger some cool project that you'd like to gift to someone that you love this year. Now, I've already made a kimono, a robe, now this apron out of scarves and curtains. Now, if you have any suggestions on a different cool project that I could use with scarves or curtains or any fabric for that matter. I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. Now hit that like button, it really helps me out. And remember to subscribe to the channel so you can find your way back for next week's video. Take care now. <laughs> Poor Russ. Uh, we love Russ. We love Russ. Puppy dog leather. 
Oh my god, no. <laughs> That's so horrible. <laughs> I love it.